I can't find a kitchen, man. I was looking for the house and I couldn't find a kitchen. I don't know what to I don't know what to value a house at that doesn't have a kitchen. Today I'm going to list Croft Manor, the legendary mansion from the Tomb Raider series for sale and see if we can discover what it's actually worth. If I understand the game correctly, you start off the game in the house. So I spent my real life money buying the original version of the game. And Steam allows me to refund games as long as it's within 14 days of the purchase and I have less than two hours of playtime. I have no intention of actually playing this game. I just wanna get information about the house so I can make a listing. So we're gonna load up and we are going to speed run taking b-roll shot taking down notes on like the house and features and stuff like that two hours of intel gathering i don't think we will need that much okay okay here's the house let me shrink my camera a little bit yo the game music is so loud as I dove into this house, I quickly realized that there was not a lot to it. I mean, there were only five rooms that I could walk through, so I had to rely on some serious, extraordinary assumptions when it came to filling in the gaps that so clearly existed in this house. Croft Manor is the stately home of the Croft family in Surrey. Passed down through the years through multiple generations from heir to heir, the manor is currently the residence of Laura Croft. The address for Croft Manor is 142 Abington, Abing, Abingdon, Abingdon, Abingdon Road, Guildford, Surrey, England. Does this address actually exist? So the address does not actually really exist. That's a little unfortunate. So we're going to, again, again, I, I, there's like, you know, various bedrooms, secret lab, the family, the, the family crypt, a cellar. We're just going to use Tomb Raider 1 as our reference. When you enter the house, you step into this majestic, spacious, grand foyer that has connections to the rest of the home. Going upstairs and then to the right, you find the primary living space uh, that has been turned into a gym of some sorts. And then branching off of that room is the library. When I was first walking through the home with Laura, I noticed that there was this area in the library that was sticking out like a sore thumb. Surely this is a secret room of some sorts. I just need to figure out which book to pull. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Ah, that's embarrassing. Okay, never mind. Close that. Let's move on. Uh, stepping back into the main foyer, you'll notice that there are some doors that we just can't gain access to. For the purposes of this video, we are going to assume that these are bedrooms. Please don't mind all of the boxes. Laura is currently in the process of moving out of the home. Once we get past all of that, we step into the ballroom. This room features some medieval architecture with high ceilings and suits of armor around the room, and admittedly an older style of flooring. And in case your guests are done dancing or being social, they can go jump in the indoor pool. After I finished walking through this house, I immediately realized that I didn't find a kitchen anywhere but when i did the sketch of this home which i used the front doors as a reference to measure out the re the rest of the house i realized that there was space that existed but seemed to be unaccounted for in the actual game that we're going to make the assumption is the kitchen as it's directly adjacent to the ballroom so when i was trying to figure out exactly how big the house was i came in at around 4800 square feet with four bedrooms and three bathrooms i think so yeah not really a manor I understand that the house is different in other games, but I thought that using the house from Tomb Raider 1 would make the most sense because it's the game that started this whole franchise off. And recognizing that this game was made in 1996, I thought it would be funny to see exactly what the devs did with the house, and I was not disappointed. As somebody who has spent almost his entire life either growing up or working in some kind of real estate office, it's really funny to play video games and see just the complete lack of attention to detail from devs to a house or a living space. It's actually really common. Now it's time for the part of the video that you all actually came here for. What would I list this house for? As always, I'm going to include the comparables that I selected for this house. Again, I'm no expert on this market area considering this home is in a completely different country from the United States, but I'm going to put all of the comparables that I use to get a range for this house down in the description below if you wanted to go check them out for any reason. The acceptable price per square foot in dollars for this range that I selected was anywhere from three to six hundred dollars per square foot. 
Considering that Croft Manor is lacking some key features such as garage parking space and an unfindable kitchen, I decided to go with the lower end of this range at exactly $300 per square foot. So using $300 per square foot times the rough estimate of the size of the home at 4,800 square feet, I'm going to list this home for $1,440,000. So let me know, would you buy Croft Manor for this much? And if you wanna see me try and list more fantasy or video game real estate, come check out a stream sometime. We do them once a week or once every other week. I'm going to try and start putting out announcements talking about when the next stream for a fantasy real estate stream will be. So come hang out, come suggest your own houses, and let's see if we can put a value to it. And that's going to be it for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Imagine there's a Zillow listing, the Zillow listing already for this house. So here's the thing. I looked up Zillow's TOS because I was originally going to list... Um, I was like actually going to make a real listing for the house uh, uh, for Waycrest Manor, the house that I did uh, in my video two weeks ago. And I looked up their TOS and I didn't find anything that explicitly stated that I um, was not allowed to do that, but that my listing could be reported and removed if there was like, I don't know, false information or whatever discovered about it. But the thing that prevented me the thing that prevented me from actually listing the house was that I had to enter some kind of contact information for people to be able to get a hold to be for people to be able to get a hold of me if I if you know if they were interested in purchasing the house and I didn't want to just put like some random phone number and I definitely wasn't about to put my phone number so that's why I didn't do it. that's why I didn't list the that house but maybe one day we just get like a, a a burner phone number that like doesn't go to anybody or anything and that's what we list i think it would be really funny to list a video game house on zillow just for fun